You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our new website, ProLeftPod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for September 8th, 2017. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the parking lot of Peggy Noonan's super awesome American History Funhouse Adventure Ride and Distillery, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. And we always do a hat tip to Ten Grain whenever we mention Peggy Noonan because Ten Grain owns. Peggy Noonan. He owns so. their title of Peggy Noonan. And their ti- should know their old school blogger title yeah. to Peggy Noonan. And you should go read Mock Paper Scissors because. Every, every day, really. Every, every day. day. Every but day. I, you should especially read everything Ten Grain writes about Peggy. Peggington. Peggington. Because he's got her pegged. He, he's, he's, everyone has to pay respect. Everyone. Well, and I, and I feel, I said on Twitter to someone today, you know, that. If anyone has a uh, gauge as to Peggy Noonan's blood alcohol level <laughs> at any given time, it's 10 grain. <laughs> so, and uh, just so we uh, explain for future generations that have mm-hmm. no idea what the fuck we're talking about, uh, Peggy Noonan decided to hold forth on the uh, history of America from the founding of the Republic until breakfast today. <laughs> um, and apparently the Civil War solved everything. Uh, after that, everybody got along. Everybody reconciled. It was great. It was just friggin' great. And everyone coming out of the Civil War was a hero. It was a hero who yeah. fought very hard and honorably. And everyone reconciled. The South tried very hard to reconcile. They tried very hard. And everyone from Soledad O'Brien to me just went to town on just pinata this psychotic old weirdo uh, who I might add. Uh, I, I felt compelled to add this on the little post I did today. Um, Peggy Noonan is now a uh, respected MSNBC employee. Uh, mm-hmm. there, was a, uh, there was a Greta Van Susteren sized hole in Phil Griffin's heart. <laughs> That's and what it to, was. He had to fill it with something that sort of resembled Greta Van. So uh, he picked Peggy Noonan, uh, who is a trans chandler for Ronald Reagan and has a long history of just fucking ignoring um, anything inconvenient about American history that um, uh, screws up her vision, her Reagan esque cartoonish childlike vision of american history and she'll tell you that to your face yes she will yes she will she'll say we're just gonna move on and keep on walking yes. after after the abu Ghraib torture yeah photos that oh, came out was just like uh you I know we just need to keep on that. walking a great nation just should sometimes everything should be mysterious and we should just <laughs> move on she says in this whispery gin soaked yeah. voice of hers yeah so uh she just decided that that uh, the entire history of this country uh, didn't exist because it was inconvenient to her thesis. Uh, well, and she was trying very hard to criticize Trump for his tweeting and say, you know, they didn't tweet during the Civil War. Yeah. These these uh, brave men who fought the Civil War didn't tweet. Uh, she was also making a claim that it was a um, – and she used a, a Yiddish word for shame, yeah. Shonda, yeah. Uh, that – some Civil War Confederate stained glass windows are being removed from the National Cathedral. Uh huh. And she thought that was a Shonda, a shame. And why she felt she needed to go to Yiddish on that is anybody's guess. I can think and of many Yiddish words I would use to describe. I guess she was. <laughs> uh, putz. Yeah. Uh, Vons. There's a whole bunch yeah. of I love Yiddish is a lovely language. It's a wonderful full of, language. Full of wonderful yeah. salty words to describe um, uh, lunatics like Peggy Noonan, who, as I said, brand new, freshly minted MSNBC respected MSNBC employee and 2000, winner. 2017 Pulitzer Prize winner. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because yeah. that's because and so it's been a as I said today in my post a bottled in bond banner year for Peggy. Yeah, uh, she got yeah. a new job. She's got a new gig. She's got a uh, new look. Uh, she's got a Pulitzer Prize that she can sort of wave around in the air, and uh, she can go on Twitter and just absolutely show her ass to the whole world. And nobody who actually writes paychecks to Peggy Noonan and hires her to write things cares yeah. at all because words don't mean anything anymore. Yeah. Um, yep. We'd like to welcome uh, our old sponsor back. Uh, We're the good Lord split you, boy. Let me tell you. If you had bought, I didn't buy uh, Where the Good Lord Split You, Emergency Farewell Party Planners, uh, stock 
when it was uh, low because the stock is through the roof. It's just yeah. through the roof. You can't even touch it. I can't even touch it. It's split. I don't know how many times. Ironically, the 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 farewell party planner, uh, where the good Lord splits you, stock has split like 17 times. <laughs> um, but we'd like to uh, welcome a new sponsor, a brand new sponsor. All of our old sponsors in place. All of our old imaginary sponsors are in place. Yes. Uh, but we have a new sponsor this week, the Why I Oughta Revenge <laughs> Reminder Services. <laughs> Why I ought to revenge reminders, because sometimes you forget who you're supposed to be mad at. But, you know, it seems to me that the people that need why I ought to don't really need it. No. So <laughs> the people that would subscribe to why I ought to don't need it. They always harbor that revenge in their souls. So, well, yeah, but sometimes you forget that, uh, especially perhaps here on the left side of the universe, uh, <laughs> uh, we forget who it is we're actually supposed to be really, really pissed at. Yeah. And we end up um, taking it out on people. That's true. And That's there are, a, for example, there are a number of people who are nominally considered liberals or on the left or, or Democrats or loosely attached or independent something, something, uh, who really want a party where it's okay to insult women, mm -hmm. it's okay to dismiss black people, where uh, white people who are financially pretty secure uh, can just spout off whatever the fuck they want. Uh, about their utopian ideal that will come to pass once the government is, you know, taken down and replaced mm -hmm. with something better. Uh, there is a party for people like that. It's called the Republican Party. Yeah. I, I invite you, uh, Jill Steiniaks and others who are still hanging on to that dream, uh, just go out and become Republicans. And, mm -hmm. and Riff Glass, I want to stop you there for a minute and uh -huh. just bring up the fact that we don't know who we're talking to on social media most of the time. Yeah. And... I have realized this week how important it is to just not get obsessed with what strangers are saying on Twitter. Yes. Um, the reason I bring that up is you had a conversation this weekend. Junior Dude was home from college for the first time. He yes. went and saw his sisters got to see his stinky dorm room. It's already stinky. It's already stinky. Um, well, it's already stinky. If you consider Axe stinky. Axe body, body spray. spray. Oh my Stinky, god! It then. just hits you like a brick wall yeah. when you walk in this very confined space. Mm -hmm. But he was home, and he has to write a um, paper for his anthropology course and study a group of people that he's familiar with. And whether that means, you know, if he was from an Italian family, he could discuss being an Italian family, and that would be, you know, the culture of that and what that's like. And the idea is to get these freshman kids familiar with terminology of anthropology, but right. writing about something that's very familiar to them so they don't get caught up in trying to research something that they don't know. Right. Uh, that they want to learn the, the, the lingo. Yeah. And so uh, Junior Dude didn't know what he was going to write about. And since his obsessive interest is politics mm -hmm. and he was a big Bernie supporter, I said, why don't you write about – uh, college students who supported Bernie Sanders. And he loved that idea. You know, that's just great. That'll be awesome. And as we were talking about, you know, what, what he wanted to do and how he wanted to do it, and he was making notes about what he wanted to say, and uh, to, and I, I wanted him to be clear to define which young voters he was talking about. Was he just talking about those on college campuses or was he talking about others? And he said, well, you know, and he, he said something about the elites. You know, I really want to attack the elites. Yeah. <laughs> remember that? I, I remember what I said, too. <laughs> yeah, well, that, I want you to mention that. Go ahead. <laughs> I just said, uh, dude, let me point out something to you. Uh, where did you spend your summer vacation again? <laughs> oh, that's right. Touring Europe. And, and how are you able to tour Europe's capitals? My dad is rich. Uh huh. And you're going and you're doing what now? You're back from school. You couldn't decide which of these three schools to go to, so you picked the one that was most you know nearest and dearest to your heart, right? Right. And you're you're white, and you're basically you know I mean we're you know we're poor here, but you're uh, in, in terms of material needs, you're not hurting for anything. Yeah. Well, the right? deal is in the divorce, his dad got the three houses and I got the three kids. Right. That's then that was that was pure prenup. You know that's yeah. what happened, and I feel like I got the better deal, so that's yeah. fine. But in terms of uh, his uh, junior dude situation, he's not, you know, he, he's trying to find the job and he's having yep. a little difficulty. Uh, he's, he's worked before. It's not like he's, you know, he's ignorant of, of labor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. But, he was a dishwasher in a breakfast restaurant last yeah, summer. So, so it's not like he hasn't worked for a living. He doesn't living, disdain but, work at any way. No. And he doesn't believe it's, it's beneath him. 
But I just said, okay, so you you, you vacation in one of your two or three homes. You, <laughs> uh, you took a cruise with your rich father to and tour Europe, and now you're going Scandinavia, to college, yes. yes, to the whitest part of Europe, <laughs> and now you're you're going to the college of your choice. Yeah. Um, dude, you are the elite. You are the elite, and you're a white male, and right? You know what? <laughs> um, this this fine young man who uh, who I used to have to look in the face when I was telling him a joke because yeah, right, humor right. was always you know tricky when you're right the when you're on the spectrum, right? Right. Cracked up. He absolutely yep, cracked he up. He did. And he, I said, you know, we're teasing you, right? And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're oh right, yeah, you right. got me. He so, said, you got me. Yeah. You know, don't, ask not for whom the elite bell tolls, but. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so that that is my point is that uh, and, and I wanted to read this very short thread. Fantastic. This is from Lance Mannion. Oh, love him. And this morning he had just this little four tweet thread that I just loved. Five tweets. It is one of the things I hate about Trump and his gang is they tempt me to commit the sin of pride. Hmm. Next to them, I feel like a saint. And I'm not. I'm a rotten human being, and I can prove it. Not being as rotten a human being as the rottenest human being going is not grounds for canonization. Still, here I am day after day on Twitter publicly polishing my halo. Mm -hmm. So he's probably costing me another few hundred years in purgatory, if not outright damnation. Thanks, Donald. Yeah. <laughs> and... I just loved that because mm -hmm. it is so important as we sit at our ex very uh, expensive in terms of the whole world, right? Uh, the whole world's income, very expensive technology, Yes. access to technology. My God, this afternoon, our Internet slowed a little bit. <gasps> oh, no. And there was like this, I clicked on something and I'm trying to write for Crooks and Liars, you know, and there's this lag and I was like, no. <laughs> you know? Damn you! Yeah, and here are you know, if not even going so far as Mumbai, but right. going to Houston, mm -hmm. where you have people who uh, have very nice homes having to clean up after a hurricane, and it's terrible. People who lost their whole town, lost their whole towns. Their Absolutely. town is gone. Their town is and just I'm gone. I'm sitting here. I'm yeah. sitting here in a dry, warm, yeah. carpeted. <laughs> Yeah. Living room, you With know. Food in the fridge and healthy food kids. Food in the fridge, exactly. And count, count your blessings, absolutely. Right. And and not saying I'm better than it. I'm better than some random person who is still wanting to relitigate the primaries uh, and and not to get caught up in that. I mean, it's easy to, to bash Susan Sarandon. She's an easy target because she she's very, very wealthy and very, very privileged. And it was easy for her to say shake up the system. Right. Uh, and that kind of privilege should be smacked down every opportunity. But mm -hmm. at the same time, uh, we don't know on Twitter if it's some 14 year old boy, half the time, I think it is somebody who is completely unaware of their privilege mm -hmm. and doesn't have a drip glass in the kitchen leaning out to the dining room <laughs> as we're working on a college assignment <laughs> saying, dude, reality check. I also want to say something about this, the hurricanes that are coming. I've yes. been thinking a lot about these, as I'm sure we all have, these hurricanes. Mm -hmm. And Louise Hay died a couple of weeks ago. Do you know who she is? She's one of these new age people who wrote books about you can heal your life through your thinking and, and so forth. And you can judge her either one way or the other as being flaky or being – judge her any way you want. The one thing that everybody said about her as she passed away a couple of weeks ago and, and that was a nice thing to say about her and it's an absolutely true thing to say about her is she provided a home and a hope for people with AIDS from the very beginning of – the epidemic, when people were just dying and dying and dying and dying and dying. Mm -hmm. And the uh, zeitgeist around AIDS was, this is punishment for being gay. This is a gay disease. This is a dirty gay disease based on dirty things. Right. And it's perfectly okay to ostracize these people, and they are healing this is not a priority. I, I remember. And, you know, this you know is... and, and ACT UP came out and people really mobilized. and uh, But it didn't mean that thousands of people 
you know, very creative people, very warm, loving people who were in families and had lots of people who loved them died, you know, yeah. just in, in massive quantities. That was people. a plague. It was right. an American it was a plague. plague. Right. And uh, Louise Hay uh, provided uh, places of meetups for people with AIDS, family members of people with AIDS, friends of people with AIDS, and provided uh, a structure where people could get together and have hope for each other. Yeah. And one of the things that was in her obituary was about um, how much they would cheer when a mother of an AIDS patient would come to one of these meetings. Mm -hmm. Fathers never came. Mm -hmm. But if a mother showed up as a way of supporting her child uh -huh. who was dying and we didn't, there was no cure uh, and never and would be, as far as anyone there, knew. As far as anyone knew, exactly. We, yeah. There wasn't going to be any remission to this. It was this is a death sentence. Yeah, and it's God's um, punishment everywhere you look. It was God's and, will. And she, she was the one who, uh, and and like I said, you can look at her books and look at her life and her persona and so forth and say blonde Californian you know, new agey, whatever. But she provided a place and she provided a support system and she provided a positive message mm -hmm. about having AIDS and what that meant and how we could confront it mentally. And that was important. Um, and and I, I see um, some of the things that she would be saying now about hurricanes and fires and sort of this plague of things that's coming over our country um, as being uh, stirred up mental energy. <laughs> yeah. And I don't necessarily make that connection 100 percent, but there is a dynamic that goes back and forth between what's happening outside our heads and what's happening inside our heads. Right. And so getting caught up in Twitter. Oh, yeah. No, um, Twitter is a way of pile. getting really agitated. Now, and I, yeah. Am I making any sense? You, you I, absolutely are. You okay. absolutely are. Okay. But but here's the thing. Twitter's a dumpster. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's a garbage pile. It's it's shit scrawled on the men's room wall. Um, and some of that is poetry. You know, Patton Oswalt stuff is is hilarious and pure poetry. And there's people on Twitter who who are eloquent and elegant and and delightful and cheerful. It's also this is what's happening in the world right now. It's a, it's a, well, yeah. And when I need something breaking, I don't go anywhere else. I go no. look at it, look for it there. Cause yeah. that's where you'll find something that's happening right now. And then yep. you have to do your actual homework and figure yep. out what it is and, and, and what the source through. is and who yeah. are you going to trust on Twitter? Exactly. But yeah. it is also where people choose to show a portion of their face to the public. Mm -hmm. You know, no one is forcing anyone to go on Twitter and say what they say or do what they do. No one is forcing them to put P uh, you know, Pepe memes up. No one's forcing okay. gamers to act like absolute assholes. There's a certain, you know, to, uh, intoxication to anonymity. Um, and I, I believe me, as, as a semi pseudonymous blogger, um, I get that. Mm -hmm. um, I, but I, I, if you, if you, if you and I sat down at a bar, I, I didn't know you, um, and this subject came up, I wouldn't back away from anything I wrote. I'm not, a, I'm not a right. Sometimes I use language I wouldn't use in church, but I use language I wouldn't use in church all the time. <laughs> that's just, that's the context. I'm a writer, yeah. and that's the context. But, you know, there's this quote from Batman Begins. Um, it's not who you are underneath. It's what you do that defines you. Mm -hmm. What did you do? What did you do in the last election? What action did you take? What actions have you taken since then? What opinions have you held and publicly defended? Uh, if you believe you have fucked up royally, what atonement have you made? Not to me. You don't owe me mm -hmm. anything. But mm -hmm. what, you know, did Joe Scarborough woke up one day and decided, oh, shit, the Republican Party is filling up with manure. Now I'm an independent. Right. Boo. Well, what? And did, Trump's a Democrat. Right. 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 But what have you done to undo all the damage you did? Well, nothing, because you don't acknowledge that you did anything. Right. You know, you 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 were perfectly happy to to uh, to prosper from all the horrible, hideous, monstrous, evil shit that your party did, and you were perfectly happy to go right along with those horrible, evil, monstrous people, as they called people like you and I. Un-American, traitorous monsters, disgusting devils, terrorist-loving scumbags. You were totally okay with that, right up until the train rolled up to your door, and it became about you and your fucking girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Then it was too much, but you didn't have the, the, the moral courage or the empathy of, of a five-year-old to say, that's unacceptable. 
what my party is doing is unacceptable. 25 years ago, what your party was doing was monstrous, and you didn't do a fucking thing. It's 2017, and you're bickering about um, nonsense, and you're yeah. fussing around about what, and, well, I was independent six months ago. Well, I was independent 12 months ago. Fuck you. Where were you 20 years ago? Yep. Well, yep. I was busy yep. stuffing my pockets, and now oh, I get right. to be on TV stuffing my pockets, to, de declaring myself an independent, and bitching about both sides. Right. No, I don't want that's that isn't um, who you are underneath. That's what you do. And what you do is terrible. And you shouldn't be allowed to do that. People like that should not be on television except as objects of mockery. So and, let me ask you a question, Drift Glass. Sure. How how do you take because we have there's a lot of news, there's always a lot of news to cover, but I think what we want to focus on today yep. is uh, number one, DACA, and yep. number two um, what happened yesterday with deal making and Trump and Chuck and Nancy and yeah. the betrayal? All of a sudden, the Republican Party is discovering the, the Republican Congress is discovering that oh my God, Trump is a fucking liar. He can't be trusted. It's and I'm watching reruns. All I'm doing is watching reruns. All I'm yeah. doing is watching the same Republican Party that suddenly discovered that George Bush and Dick Cheney were complete fucking incompetent monsters. Yep. Um, yep. Building well, their life. The, I don't know if the Congress ever discovered that, though. Did they? Oh, the, the, George Bush disappeared as a as a public uh, as a public memory. Right. The Bush administration as a whole, and remember, the entire fucking Freedom Caucus consists of a whole bunch of 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 dyed in the wool Republicans who supported George Bush and fought yep. for George Bush and cheered on George Bush and called everybody who stood in his way a traitor, putting on funny hats and pretending they'd never heard of George Bush. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They disavowed it. The minute it became politically inconvenient to own their own words, to, mm -hmm. to stand mm -hmm. up in public and say, what I said yesterday was wrong and I apologize for it. They did what Republicans always do. They ran away. They're fucking cowards. They disavowed any knowledge. I was never even there. They had an entire mainstream media who was more than willing to to aid and abet them. Utterly complicit. Yeah. And then suddenly, uh, everything before two thousand uh, and nine disappeared. Uh, there was no president before Barack Obama. No and they had a Tea Party lifeboat. They and had they had a big old well -funded Tea, Party. Tea Party lifeboat to jump into. And yep. every one of these fuckers wanted to know why Barack Obama won't lead. Won't lead. When they're the ones who are saying publicly. I will never cooperate with that black man in my White House. Mm -hmm. Never. Fuck him, fuck him, and fuck his wife. I'm never going to cooperate. I'm going to do everything I can to sabotage everything he does, including filibuster my own bills. Yep. And then you have – and the same assholes who are Bush-supporting, right-wing, reasonable conservatives during the Bush administration – are the same people who suddenly said, why can't both sides get along? Why won't Obama lead? Yep. And they're still around. So I have, no, the Republican Party is the problem. The well, whole... and, and I see this three ways. One is, this is just karma. Yeah. Everything that is happening is karma. So whether Donald Trump changes his mind tomorrow or not, doesn't matter. This is all going, this is all karma against Mitch McConnell for everything he did for eight years. Yeah. And that's number one. Number two is uh, Donald Trump is addicted to only one thing, and that is success. And he is – people have finally noticed that he says this two-week thing. Somebody yeah. called it a Trump unit. You know, yeah, no, I, it's, it's the he's Trump always Fortnite. promising – yeah, go ahead. What? It's the Trump Fortnite is the new Friedman unit. Yes, Trump Fortnite is a new Friedman unit that mm -hmm. he, in two weeks he's going to have a tax plan. In two weeks he's going to have an announcement, et cetera. That is his brilliance, and I'm sorry to call Trump, Donald Trump brilliant, but there's yeah. one area where he's got this kernel – of understanding the attention span of the American media and the American voter. Not he the American gets... voter, the Republican voter. The Republican voter, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, not liberal voters, but no. Republican voters. Right. Republican voters will forget what he promised two weeks ago. ago. 20 they'll, minutes ago. 20 minutes ago. They'll forget. Convenient. Yep. They'll forget the start of a paragraph by the end of the paragraph. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. that conditioned to forget their own words, their own hypocrisy, and their yep. own shit. Yep. And the media is perfectly willing to go right along with it because they're all complicit in it. So, yeah. But so, so here we have, and, and I, I, have a, I have a knitting analogy for you, Drift Class. <laughs> somebody walks in. West Wing. Somebody walks in to uh, me and some other person and says, you know, I saw this sweater in a magazine, and uh, I want to hire somebody to make it for me. And the other person says, well, you know, I have this store, but half of my employees don't believe you deserve a sweater. And the other half uh, 
have never made a sweater before. Uh, they believe in sweaters, but they never really made one. And uh, they're much more interested in selling uh, more yarn tomorrow than they are in making sure that you have the right yarn today. Right. So, uh, you know, we can we can work out a deal, but uh, that's basically where I am. Mm -hmm. And then they come to Blue Gal and Blue Gal says, I've got the yarn. I've got the needles. I've got the pattern. Mm -hmm. It matches the pattern that you have. I've made one before. Here's the one I made. And uh, I can have it for you in this amount of time because sure. I know how long it takes because right. I made one. Right. That is the difference between Mitch <laughs> right. and Nancy. Right. <laughs> right. And Donald Trump is not so stupid that he doesn't see the difference between here are two people who, who know how to put together a package and will right. pass it and have passed legislation before. And here are two people that are just bullshit artists. Yeah. And uh, so he knows the difference between that. I also think there is something really important about geography here. Yeah. Which is you've got Chuck and Nancy who are coastal people. <laughs> they are. They are. They travel in wealthy circles. Uh -huh. They know how to talk to rich people. And not, I'm not saying that Mitch and Paul Ryan don't know how to talk to rich people. But uh, the way that Mitch and Paul talk to rich people is to tell them what they want to hear about tax cuts. Right. That's the difference. Yeah. Which is the difference. Mm -hmm. Whereas I feel as though there's much more of a social kind of connection of – and this is not necessarily a compliment to no. Nancy. <laughs> okay, no. I understand the the complicated relationship that liberals have with Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi is uh, – you know, it's not, it's not always easy to love them, uh, but they get shit done. Right. They're and in the getting respect, shit done department. Right. Respect, respect for getting shit done. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I think that geographic and kind of social class, the, the class to which Donald Trump aspires, right. he knows his voters are Mitch, are Mitch types, you know, are, the, are, are the fucking Kentucky. morons. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the people that Mitch and Paul Ryan are trying to cater to constantly, he gets that. Yeah. But wanting a win requires, I'm going to go with the professionals on this one. Well, and, and he, and this is where, um, a whole bunch of things come together. First of all, if this is karma, when does Joe Scarborough go broke and his dick Right. Fall? Oh, I know. That's I know. all I want to know. <laughs> That's all I want to know. What's the day on which... That's not very nice, Driftlash. I, I didn't say it was nice. <laughs> when did I ever say I was... Any... I'm nice in church. Driftlash nice. is not going to forget revenge against Joe Scarborough. Mm, he is I'm... never going to no, forget. No. You know what? We're... Irish are good at like four things. <laughs> and revenge is two of them. <laughs> you know? Uh, but, resentment is another. Yeah, seething resentment, lasting for centuries. <laughs> but here's the thing. I, I use Joe Scarborough as a proxy for many, 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 many people who, who are uh, people like Phil Griffin and Andy Lack who do the hiring at MSNBC, uh, all of whom deserve a fucking lightning bolt right up their ass. If there is a just God with a good aim, karma will come for them. I don't. I, I sincerely don't believe that's happening. I believe the, the collapse of that enterprise is accelerating uh, because they don't know what to do other than what they've always done. And so they're basically running downhill faster mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. eventually you lose your balance and you go head first into the, you know, into the concrete. Um, so, but I also think there's something to be said. And, and this, again, for future generations, we're talking, uh, when we're talking about Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, we're talking about what happened this week with DACA and what happened with this week with the uh, debt ceiling. Right. Right. Um, and I, I think you cannot I don't and I don't want to speak out of turn because this is a conversation that uh, a, a an opinionated middle aged white guy probably shouldn't have or shouldn't mm -hmm. weigh in on. Mm -hmm. But it is my it is my observation that Nancy Pelosi, as a strong and, and and clever and intelligent woman, strong, intelligent women are by and large better at handling abusive, racist male assholes. Yep. Than, anyone else yep <laughs> because they have to be yep you know yep. You, you, guys can get away with you know looking the other way or walking away or, or being confrontational or getting into a bar fight what there's a whole bunch of things guys can do when other guys are behaving like donald trump mm -hmm. but nancy pelosi and women generally who who are who have come to that place in their life are really that level of power are, right are really really much better at knowing exactly how to um uh a bullfight that bull. 
Yeah, and and when to walk away and when to just deal with it. And and yeah, the number of assholes that Nancy Pelosi has had to deal with in her life yeah. and keep her wits about her. Mm-hmm. Any any woman at that level has had to deal with that. Absolutely. Yeah. So let, let's yeah. let's let's so rather than because uh, this also gets into Tanahasi Coates's column, which go we'll right talk ahead about and talk here. about that. Which well, that was trending quite a bit today. It was. And by um, the way, we are recording on Thursday, and this all may just go away tomorrow. We don't know what Donald Trump's going to do. Nobody does. So God knows. Uh, it's Ta Nehisi Coates has an article in the Atlantic, which I did not uh, open up on a tab because it just has a whole bunch of loud at pop up ads that you have to shut off, and I don't want to interrupt our conversation with a bunch of shitty music about lawn furniture. Um, <laughs> but suffice it to say, the article's entitled The First White President. Right. And I, I did copy a bit of it out, but it, it, there is... Um, Donald Trump is a hollow, uh, malignant narcissist of a human being. Mm-hmm. All he, ca- he doesn't care about success. He cares about his glory being reflected back to him mm-hmm. in whatever form it is. He doesn't care about winning. He cares about appearing to win. He doesn't care about success. He cares about appearing to succeed. Uh, he, he, he'll he slap his you know big, ugly T on any structure on earth if he thinks it will make people um, uh, esteem him more. And it's a big, hollow place in his soul where a soul should be, much like many of his voters, that will never be filled. And uh, but, but Mr. Coates points out that um, Donald Trump does have an ideology, and his ideology is white supremacy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's really open. It's really fucking open. It's there. It's right out there for anyone to see. And the reason he, he, he caught on like wildfire with the Republican Party is that's their philosophy. Yeah. It yep. always has been. It's been, well, at least my adult lifetime. You know, the, yep. there are there, deep in the ancient past, before the parties flipped, this would have been a much more uh, dif- difficult or interesting conversation. Yeah. But this is 2017. And for most of my or all of my adult life, the Republican Party has been the, the has been a, a welcoming place for racists and xenophobes and misogynists and gun nuts and Bible beating assholes like Jeffrey Beauregard Sessions the third. Mm-hmm. And the reason he is attorney general and the reason he drooled all over himself in delight at announcing that that DACA is finally going away is because nothing makes people like that happier than kicking Children yeah. who are brown, mm-hmm. nothing delights them than turning hoses on school kids. And since Jeff Sessions can't turn hoses on school kids, what he can do is throw a bunch of immigrant children out of the country. And that's what makes him happy. Wrap your head around that. Mm-hmm. Jeff Sessions is so fucking evil that what makes him happy is throwing children out of the country when they have no place else to go. And and he it, it brings him glee. That's not misbegotten or misguided or misunderstood. That's evil. Mm-hmm. Donald Trump chose the most evil person he could find because the nature of Sessions' evil is white supremacy, and that's what drives Donald Trump. It's all it's been what he's it's been what's driven him his entire life. Well, and the real key to Tana Hisekos's article is that the the germ of the Trump voter is okay. We had a black president, right? The worst white person on the planet right. can therefore be president, right? To undo it. And that is absolutely the basis of white supremacy is, yes. and and LBJ was the one who got this and yeah. encapsulated it in a quote, which is, as long as the lowest, basest, poorest, worst educated white person in the South can step on a black guy, uh-huh. he will vote against his own economic interests, he will do whatever you say, as long as you keep the black guy down, because yeah. then he has a perch on which to be socially superior. Yeah. And that's what this whole election uh, in terms of race was about. It yeah. was about insisting that the worst white candidate that you could possibly have. And, and, and he doesn't say this, but this goes along with gender, too. The yeah. worst white man in the world is better than the best woman we could possibly have. Well, the worst white man in the world is perfect yeah. because what he will yeah. do is what we have we, we have been frantic to do for eight years. Yeah. I mean, you know, the number of, of conservatives and Republicans who, who sneer at 
people like us say, see, now, now you know how we felt. Mm -hmm. Now you know how we felt for eight years. Well, you felt that way because you're a racist asshole. Yeah. Not because of anything Barack Obama did to you or took away from you or disempowered you from or, or denied you. You felt that way because you are a, you're a bad person. Yeah. You're a racist asshole. That's show me, why you felt Show me the gun that, that uh, yeah. Barack Obama he took away from you. you. Right. And so, and, and as Mr. Coates and uh, many, many other people, including <laughs> us, have rightly pointed out since day one, the foundation of Donald Trump's presidency is the negation of Barack Obama's legacy. Right. Right. Period, full stop. And the reason for it is not economic anxiety. Nope. <laughs> it's yep. not job loss. It's not factories. Those are all factors, and we can talk about those once we get rid of the Republican Party. I'm happy to talk about all those. But what, what's driving these people is deep-seated racism that they cannot acknowledge publicly. Uh, so they get this proxy, this big, loud, racist asshole uh, as their proxy, as their spokesperson. And they will follow him to hell. And they already have. Mm -hmm. And that's what's driving, and and that nexus, that truth about our our national conversation. Now I'm going to blow my own horn for one second. I'm not going to, I'm not dumb enough to compare myself to Mr. Coates, but I did write back in 2008 a post called the the Negrological Constant, mm -hmm. which which equated the, the Albert Einstein needed a thing to make up to balance out a formula, so he invented a thing called the cosmological constant. It's just a number I made up because the formula doesn't work without it. Right. Well, you, you cannot understand American politics unless you understand racism and mm -hmm. white supremacy. You mm -hmm. can't do it. It doesn't make any sense. And I, I pulled quotes from Charlie Rose and David Brooks, who were just like scratching their heads and wondering why things were this way and why Barack Obama had to do this and John McCain didn't have to. Because of race, dummy. Yeah, you leaned out of the kitchen and said, you guys, you know you're privileged, right? Yeah, yeah. it's race. Why the fuck? Well, of course we can't say it because we all live in the same little bubble. In right. the same little, you know, New York and uh, Washington, D.C. Beltway bubble where none of our friends talk this way. None of them behave this way. None of them in, even speak about it in private. Uh, even off-color jokes, we just look like, oh, you know, Peggy Noonan will come over and whisper to you that this isn't appropriate for this venue. Yeah, well, and it's it's what we call Chardonnay racism. You and I have coined Chardonnay racism and Fitbit bigotry, right? Yes, it's yeah. it's that elite. It's that you yeah. know we don't we don't wear we don't clothes. talk that way because that's uncouth, right? Uh, but because it makes us uncomfortable to think about white supremacy and our how we benefit from it, right? Mm -hmm. But right. it's certainly it's it's true and it's there and it's real and yep. and Donald Trump is the is the physical manifestation of it and. You can measure how deep-rooted it is by the level of, of hysterical discomfort on the part of the media to touch this with a 10-foot pole. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to talk about it. This is why the both sides narrative, which is ludicrous on the face of it, absolutely, it's, it's, it's insane. It's wrong. It's silly. It's dumb. It's easily debunked. We'll never die. Mm -hmm. Because there is no other way to confront what's going on in the Republican Party unless you want to do one or two things. You have to say the reason the Republican Party is the way it is is because of endemic, specific, cultivated, deliberate appeals to race. Mm -hmm. That's why Rush Limbaugh has a job. That's why that's why mm -hmm. Sean Hannity has a job. That's why Fox News exists. That's why Breitbart's a thing. And on and on and on and on. All the usual suspects. Or you simply note the fact the Republican Party behaves this way automatically deflect every conversation over to you. Ah, somewhere on the left. I'm sure someone's doing something bad too. Let's move right. on to the next thing. Right. Because the conversation, if you, t if you stop it at that point and say, no, let's not do that. Let's talk about the Republican party is so horribly uncomfortable and professionally suicidal for people like Mark Halperin mm -hmm. and Joe Scarborough that they will do anything to avoid it. And so they invented this myth and this myth that saves them from having to have a conversation about what they did, what their party did and most importantly, what liberals have been saying all along they have been doing. Because that they'd rather do that than anything else. They'd rather burn the you know, NBC Tower down than ever admit liberals were right mm -hmm. about, about the right all along. Okay. Um, you might remember um, that a, a terrible, terrible person named Michael Anton um, parlayed his shitty, awful Flight 93 election pseudonymous column into a senior a security position with the Trump White House. Um, and this was a column that he wrote and it was repeated and referenced and everyone talked about it and it was just horrible. And it was, you know, it was, it was, he said, look, Hillary, the Hillary, this was written almost exactly a year ago. And it was the Hillary Clinton presidency is Russian roulette with a semi-auto. <laughs> Hillary Clinton would definitely kill everyone and destroy America. Period, full stop. That was just non-negotiable, clear as day. Anybody could see it. 
So we have to make this the Flight 93 election. You may die anyway. Uh, <laughs> But it's time to charge the cockpit and try to land the plane. Yeah. No guarantees. Yeah. You should, you know, it's so important. And, and whatever marginal, you know, icky feeling you might have about voting for Donald Trump, you got to get in there, man, yeah. and seize yeah. the plane. Because even if you don't feel good about Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton's going to kill us all. Yeah. Um, that got him a job with the Trump administration. Mm -hmm. uh, it got him uh, columns everywhere. Uh, it got him. And I, I looked at that a year later and said, no, no, this was the flight MH370 election. And the flight MH370 was the zombie flight that, that uh, Malaysian airline just disappeared and it just flew on and on and on forever. And I really do think that the thing... And it crashed into the Pacific and yeah, no it, one knew why. No one and knew why. It, was, it just flew on and on and on and then it ran out of gas. Clearly some gas leak or something passed, made everybody pass out or die <laughs> or, die or, or something. something. Yeah. And I think what's really freaking people out is that there was always this consensual hallucination, consensual mm -hmm. um, dream, you know, that, that, uh, that he says in Gladiator, uh, it's so fragile, you don't even, you don't even dare whisper it aloud, mm -hmm. that Amer somewhere up the food chain, there are adult professionals who will make sure that we don't crash the fucking plane. Yep. Yep. They might be careerist assholes. They might not give a shit about you personally. They're they part might... of the corrupt duopoly. Yeah. They're they might, all of right. those things. They right. They, but if real danger rears its head, real existential threat to the Republic actually right. comes along, they will stop fucking around and steer us out of the way. Yes. And yes. tell us, turn the fucking plane. This is actual danger. This is made up cartoon danger. Mm -hmm. Let's get the hell out of the way of the hurricane. And we finally cracked the, the cockpit door and it turns out there's nobody inside. Yeah. There's nobody but Mark Halperin repeating over and over again. It's both sides. Yep. It's both sides both sides and the plane is just flying on what it believes to be a centrist course right up the middle and th but it's not they're flying right into the teeth of disaster because it would it would break their hearts to admit that one side is wrong and dangerously so and we need to steer away from them until we fix whatever the fuck is broken with the republican party and that i think is what's really freaking people out because the the systems that we thought were in place the people we empowered by giving them money and a position and authority and television shows and newspaper columns who were supposed to protect us from actual existential disaster completely failed to do so. And all those people still have jobs. Well, okay. But I'm going to, I'm going to play devil's advocate with you for a moment, which is who is the us that is being protected? Because that's really important. Yes. One of the reasons, and I, I do go back, not, not necessarily to the old tired economic anxiety argument. Right. But there was a poll release this week that showed that Trump voters don't recognize their country anymore. Yes. Because of the transgenders and the right. gays and the, the black president. And, 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 and right. it is white supremacy. It is what yes. they're used to. It is their, their, Position zero of their of their life is white guys are in charge. And that got blown away by Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. And the approval of gay marriage came with Barack Obama. Yes, and uh, transgender in the military came with Barack Obama. And this acceptance of things that are just not what America is supposed to be yep. to middle class, uh, you know, coal miners in, <laughs> in Kentucky and West Virginia. Right. right? And. Furthermore, uh, there's the sense that the the white guy is supposed to win, mm -hmm. and that that didn't among, that didn't happen among those people. That right. is true. Mm -hmm. Now, in addition to that, I, I I've been thinking all week about a cover of Newsweek that I have up on my bulletin board from <laughs> 2009. I, I I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And 2009, everybody remembers uh, 2008, 2009. There was a big economic crash. That, you remember it, you know, you remember, don't you? Yeah. Banks, you know, banks were going under, and things were things on Wall Street were there were offices just emptying out, and everyone lost their job, and people lost their homes, and uh, there were real bankruptcies in the financial industry that were sure. shaking the foundations of our entire economy. Yes, there were. And the cover of Newsweek said, we're all socialists now. Mm -hmm. And I, I tore that out and put it on my <laughs> bulletin board. Yes, you and did. I didn't pull it on my bulletin board to say, yay, we're all socialists now. This is great. 
I put it on my bulletin board because I wanted to remember the date of that magazine because I knew that was going to not last forever. Oh, God, no. It's not going to last until it helped people like me. Right. And that that to me is sort of taking your analogy and then and then rewriting it a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's as if, okay, we don't know if this plane has a pilot or not. Uh Uh-huh. Let's cut off everything after first class. <laughs> yes. Oh no. <laughs> and then absolutely fly, right. <laughs> absolutely, I absolutely agree. No, the, the idea is that the reason 360 million people don't fucking riot. Yeah. Uh, is the is the consensual um, social compact mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that at some level we're in this together. Yep. And yep. that that. You know, we can all disagree on lots of things, but we can all get together on the Nazi thing, right? Right. Apparently right. not. Apparently, no, no we not. can't. Yeah. And the people who are supposed to to red red card that, who are supposed to come out and say, nope, Nazi, you're out of the game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Won't do it. Won't do it. Yeah. Won't do it. Yeah. Won't. And, and, and that moment has been coming for decades. And yeah. those line judges have been asleep at the switch, turning away, lying to themselves pocketing the money that they get for for pretending that this isn't happening and now it's too late it's not too late for us but it, it, it should be too late for them there there is a place in hell reserved for people who betray the public trust yep. and that's what our media and our political leaders uh have done for a long time mm-hmm. they've mm-hmm. sold us out uh while we were clear it was clear there's a hurricane bearing down on us all and you're telling me it's 78 and sunny outside yep i can see the fucking hurricane why are you continuing to lie to me well because i don't answer to you i answer to a guy named jeff zucker and jeff zucker will, will cut my balls off if i say there's a real hurricane and we should all actually take shelter now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's mm-hmm. that's it's as simple as that. it's a simple well then the fact that you have that job again means you're a bad person yeah you're, you know yeah. you're just a really bad person let's get back quickly to daca because that goes directly to this yeah well um, and, I, and i also wanted to just just note that someone, a na- woman named Allison on Twitter, at Allison, A-L-Y-S-S-O-N, mm-hmm. sent a two-word tweet today, and it was Heather Heyer. Yeah. And it was yep. just like, oh, wait a minute. Yep. You know, let's not forget that a Nazi killed a woman with her with his car. Right. And let's and and then we can go back to Black Lives Matter and why that started and all of those names. Yeah. That are just forgotten in. Donald Trump understands that we're going to forget Heather Heyer in what what time period? In two weeks. In, in two, two weeks. weeks. Uh, I, I do want to uh, go over DACA because that something has changed. Yep. Uh, because as we as we mentioned, Jeff Sessions was just delighted mm-hmm. that he finally got to start you know hose and turning the fire proverbial fire hose on children. Mm-hmm. Um, and the White House actually had a talking point memo drafted urging recipients to be prepared for a departure from the United States. Get right. ready to go, people. Get ready to go. So we're not fucking around this time. And then President Stupid stepped on his own dick again. Mm-hmm. Then he looked at the ratings and decided the ratings for this show sucked. So you know what we're going to do? I'm going to undo everything I just did and make Jeff Sessions look like a fucking fool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now there are 15 states in the District of Columbia filing a lawsuit. Mm-hmm. And Nancy Pelosi got Donald Trump to tweet today that, don't worry. Don't We're not worry, taking Dr. any Jeff. action. But you know what I found out? There was a little bit of backtracking to figure out. Mm-hmm. Donald Trump called Nancy Pelosi. Mm-hmm. I find that remarkable. Hey, girl. Yeah. yeah. What do I do next? Yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling it was just. Looks like just we have like a woman that. president after all. <laughs> but but the but and this is something that we've been touching on for for several months now. You know, here comes the debt ceiling. Here comes the debt ceiling. Yeah. It's the end of the yeah. world. Yeah. That's what precipitated this. Yep. Because they, the, the Republicans thought they had a fucking deal. And if you think you have a fucking deal with a con man, you're wrong. Right. You're going to get screwed. And here's the thing about uh, having a, a stupid, angry, vindictive asshole as president. He will fuck you. Yep. Yep. At the first, it doesn't matter if it, if it burns down the world. He will piss on you. And the people he wanted to piss on this week were named Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan. And let's not forget also that there was a day this week when the Dow dropped 204 points in one day. And it what? You know who what? understands the complication that that brings? Chuck mm-hmm. Schumer understands that. Mm-hmm. Senator so, from New York understands that. The senator from Wall Street. Yep. Right. Absolutely he understands, understands that. that. He understands those people and what the phone calls from that part of the world are going to be like. Yep. And Donald Trump cares about that too. And again, I think this is geography talking. Yep. 
that it's, is, yeah. you know, I don't want the stock market to crash. <laughs> yes, on <laughs> I don't my care watch. About Doc, I don't have one way or the other about Doc. I know, you know, hurting kids is bad for TV. People don't like to see that. And I care. I want to look like I'm a good guy and right. a hero and so forth. But 204 points on the Dow in one day, you know, a couple of days like that. And Donald Trump is going to totally change his tune. Well, and, and, I, and that's the thing. The, the, the Republicans' leadership had a deal. Yeah. Yeah. They had it all worked out. They were they were going to make it. They were going to announce, and right. Paul Ryan was was up on his high horse talking about politicizing the debt is irresponsible. Yeah, so right. the guy who who created who leads the party that created politicizing the debt, yeah. and as Lawrence O'Donnell pointed out last night, needs Democratic votes because his party politicizes the debt ceiling. Exactly. So, but again, we the only people who remember this stuff or talk about it are liberals because everyone else decided that. That was an inconvenient memory, and they could just put it in the back of the closet. So the GOP had this all worked out and expected to tie the debt ceiling to the Harvey relief package, and we're going to kick it down the road until after, basically, so it won't kill us for the midterms. Right. And you know what? Donald Trump said, ah, fuck it. I'm going to give the Democrats what they want. Three months. And then you have to come back, and we'll do this all over again. And then after he said that, he said, you know what? Fuck it. Let's get rid of the debt ceiling altogether. Why does this stupid thing exist? Which is a great question. That's a I great agree. question. I totally agree with that. Absolutely. Well, because Mitch McConnell needs a big red button on his desk that he can push and blow up the world. If And you say the, blow up the world, and that to me is the, the reason that Donald Trump is able – himself by himself to destroy the freedom caucus if he wants to mm -hmm. the, the power of the freedom caucus comes from they're just crazy enough to do it yeah but if they're not the craziest person in the room right. <laughs> they lose <laughs> all of their power right oh yeah no <laughs> the suddenly... person that wants to well is is more than willing to blow himself up is the one that wins <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah, we'll, well blow and, all and, of you away before he blows himself up, I guess is the better analogy, right? And in the, in the service of memory, I want to do a very quick rundown of stuff in the news. Okay. 30 seconds each. Uh, many, many government lobbyists and contractors have memberships in Trump's private golf clubs and properties. This is a way of them funneling, of buying access to the President of the United States, which is illegal, and it goes against the Emoluments Clause. And uh, the Democrats offered an amendment that would shut that down. The Republican Congress killed that amendment. Mm -hmm. the Republican Congress wants to keep it legal and open to uh, let lobbyists and who God knows who all else to bribe the president of the United States. Drain the swamp. Drain the swamp right into the White House. Uh, about 400 EPA employees have recently left, like in the last couple of weeks, which is exciting because the EPA is kind of the people you want. Uh, looking the place over after a disaster. And, um, and especially in Texas, where there is clearly a huge chemical problem with yeah, people many. going to the hospital with really weird skin conditions well, you have walking in of, flood water. Yeah. You have a lot of Superfund sites and a lot of toxic yeah. chemical sites and a lot of refinery that now is part of the ecosystem. Yes, right. And was never supposed to be. Uh, there's a gentleman named Jim uh, Brindenstein. You should know him. He's a representative from Oklahoma. He's also uh, Donald Trump's choice to lead NASA. He's also a climate change denier. Yeah. So that's exciting. Why wouldn't you put that guy in charge of NASA? Um, Facebook, uh, after denying and denying and denying and denying this was happening, suddenly discovered that, you know what? Uh, there were a whole bunch of Russian trolls all over uh, Facebook. And they did pay us 100 grand for ads. And they did buy 3,300 ads targeting, really specifically targeting and polluting the political discourse in this country. And there were... Nearly 500 suspicious accounts. Golly, all the shit that those paranoid liberals and the and the people who were doing reporting on this have been saying was happening actually did happen. Oops. And today, people noticed for the first time a video that was made last month by the BBC interviewing uh, one of Donald Trump's campaign digital mavens. Yeah. And she well, was touring them. the empty building where Cambridge Analytica and these other tech people uh, huddled to use Facebook to win the election for Donald Trump. And she said, oh, you know, Facebook won the election for us. Yeah. Uh, we bought ads. They bought, I mean, the, this Russian thing is $100,000, which sounds like an A-B test. You know, right. it's like we're going to just drop a little money in here and see what happened. But uh, Donald Trump's campaign spent $86 million on mm -hmm. Facebook ads and Facebook yeah. posts and uh, this woman actually was Donald Trump on Facebook, and she said, yeah, I could write like him because he's so authentic. Yeah. <laughs> it's no irony. Just, you yeah. know, I could fake Donald Trump all day long because he's, he's got a 40-word so vocabulary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
Believe uh, me. Believe, believe me. me. She said that. Believe I use me. believe me and very, and I can be Donald Trump on Facebook. Yeah. And and I think personally that this is this is something that ties back to uh, Kurt Anderson's new book uh-huh. on on how things fell apart over 500 years, which is uh, Americans need to grow up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Visa Europe. Yeah. In terms of having a healthy skepticism about things. Uh-huh. And this is something we learned in the French election when Marie Le Pen lost, even though, uh, you know, Putin was involved all over the place with trying to influence the election. People in Europe know, oh, that's Putin. No, we don't and want that here. We don't no. have to pay attention to that. No. And this Facebook thing needs to happen to the point where, number one, liberals go on Facebook and make sure that they're very active there, as, as distasteful as that is for a lot of us. Uh, uh, I know you hate it. I know you do. do. My dad hates do. it, too. You two men of Chicago just hate hate Facebook. We do. It's a thing. But there, people who uh, – there's going to have to be a truth army on Facebook to, yeah. because clearly that's important. And I, I'm very pissed off at my people, you know, white Christian women – who go on Facebook to see pictures of their granddaughters and believe everything they read over there at like mm-hmm. it's news. I, this this election turned on stupid women who, you know, oh, look, Hillary did this. That's just terrible. And then oh, the Pope endorsed Donald Trump. That's great. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, speaking so, of the Pope. Speaking of the Pope. Yeah. <laughs> Steve gonna- Bannon <laughs> decided to go to confession <laughs> and tell the world what he thinks about the Catholic Church. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently he doesn't think the Catholic Church. Well, uh, Republicans love the Catholic Church when it's oppressive and cruel and vicious and uh, medieval. Yeah, they hate the Catholic Church when it says, you know, uh, immigrants are people too, and we're put on this earth to help those who are weaker and lesser and less fortunate than we are. And we're supposed to love each other, and climate change is real. And grow the fuck up, you idiots! So, well, and he- and, and Pope Francis has gone way further than that. Oh, God, he has, yeah, other yeah. than that, he has he has embraced atheists. He has said, "Who am I to judge?" Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, he's gone you're the there. Pope. That's who you are, and he is not being the authoritarian leader, no. right wing leader that Donald Trump is. That's what what Catholics like Steve Bannon want the Pope to be right. is a right wing authoritarian leader like Donald right. Trump, so. with a direct line to Jesus. And so yeah. he decided to open up about. The fact that Catholic Church is awful and, you know, they, their position on illegal immigration is is because they need to breed lots of little kids uh, to, to fill the pews. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He's just a horrible fucking human being. And by the way, he sat at the right hand of power for the last six months, and he's still there. Mm-hmm. The chair might be empty, but that cell phone is working overtime. Overtime. Um, and speaking of cell phones and conversations that you have in the Oval Office, you know what uh, the Justice Department found out this week, Blue Gal? What did they find out, Dirk Glass? Uh, apparently, Barack Obama never, ever, ever wiretapped Trump Tower, period, full stop. That was another Donald Trump lie, apparently. Well, now, the next thing you're going to tell me is that that book, Clinton Cash, didn't have any facts in it. Yeah, it had a lot of stuff in it. A lot of words in there. There were a lot of words. <laughs> there was a lot of punctuation. Um, but speaking of people who put words together and lie for a living, Chris Colback, as you might know, is the esteemed head of Donald Trump's uh, Voter Suppression Committee. He's also a paid contributor at Breitbart News, because why wouldn't he be? And his whole committee is using private email accounts, by the way. Yeah. So. And, and, and no one, again, the only people who are making us think about this are the people with no power to do anything about it whatsoever. Right. Uh, one day we will be. And finally, of course, this is the week that North Korea just kept waving nukes around. There's nothing I can do about it. There's nothing Blue Gal can do about it other than, like hurricanes, um, wish us all well and pray for the best and try to find good people to help us through what is an incredibly stressful, exhausting, scary time. Yep. And uh, Nancy Pelosi was on the news this morning in a press conference saying that she is quite convinced that uh, North Korea doesn't want to use nuclear weapons. They want to sell nuclear weapons no. to other bad people. And I said, uh, that does not make me feel safer, Nancy. No. <laughs> so, uh, no. yeah, that, the, is, the, that is the thing. The, so. the, the news that people wanted to t- take away, the, the news that our media wanted to take away, t- they want to take away every time that Donald Trump doesn't actually throw up on his own shoes and, take, mm-hmm. and, and drop his pants and start rambling is that the great pivot has arrived. Well, and that that is my last comment for this podcast on on anything substantial, which is don't worry about normalizing Donald Trump. No, 
I, I was worried about that yesterday when yeah. this thing happened of the the Democrats plan going through and yeah. him sort of looking presidential in the Oval Office sitting with four members of Congress. Yeah. Don't worry about that. He There yeah. is no way that he is going to pivot or be sane or be no. stable or be in any way not tripping on his own dick tomorrow. Yeah. No, the, so, the, the great pivot will not arise from the pivot patch. It will not fly no, across the world no. distributing bipartisanship to good yeah. boys and girls. There is no fucking pivot. Here's here's the analogy that I use for myself. Um, there are certain things like world-ending things mm -hmm. that you can find a way to work on with people that you really, really think are horrible. Yeah. The United States and Russia still partner on the International Space Station. Now, Russia wants out of the deal, and in 2024, this might be a different story, but... Even though we are uh, opponents and they are a hostile foreign power that fucked with our election and and screws with us every day and is, is hacking our nuclear uh, facilities, we still have this this child with them that we are both responsible for. And we, yep. we find a way to make things like that work. So that's all this is. Well, and Putin said the right thing about North Korea this week as well. Yeah. I mean, you know, there are standards. And this is the thing with Pelosi and Schumer as well, uh -huh. which is... Yeah, we're re we resist. Yeah, we're going to fight Trump. We're not going to default on the nation's debt in no. order to hurt Trump. No. We're going to we're going to finagle and negotiate and make a deal so that America doesn't default on their debt because that is a an act of, that has consequences far beyond right. Trump or anything else and will create real suffering in the world. And, and just we're as just a reminder that this is why Democrats gave in during budget negotiations with Republicans yeah. when Barack Obama was president because the yeah. Republicans said we will blow the fucking world yes, up exactly. unless you let Bush tax cuts live forever. Yep. And yep. and rather than for another the year, yeah. Burn, yeah. And rather than have people's unemployment, you know, be withdrawn, Barack Obama said, "Fine. I you are going to really hurt real people." No, right, because because we were losing 50,000 jobs a day in November of 2008, we did that. And yeah, when you're hemorrhaging jobs, I mean, this is this is also the compromise about single payer and public option as well, right. which is the decision was made. We're not going to fire millions of insurance company employees at a point when they can't get a job anywhere. We already have enough unemployment. So, uh, you know, you make these compromises and they're, they suck. Right. But, uh, you know, you it's called doing the best you can. And the reason and, the, yeah. that you have to make these compromises is because the other guy's willing to hold innocent people hostage. Well, and, and this is the thing with the latest out of uh, – I tweeted, OMFG, just bury the Republican Party already because Topher Spiro said this latest attack on Obamacare is to bring the spending down to zero by 2027 yeah. when all Republicans will be dead. <laughs> right. Oh, and I do want to give you one date to think about, Blue Gal. Yeah. September 30th. You know what September 30th is? It's the deadline that the parliamentarian has given for right. uh, Obamacare repeal under reconciliation. And That's I right. just made you so hot that I know you that. Did. You are so hot. Let's end <laughs> this goddamn podcast so I can make out with you. For God, you know what? Each week we post our Facebook page and, and website. website. An internet kitty or dog or pet sent in by you, the listeners, because this week's internet pet is a gorgeous dog named Timber. Timber. Timber came home from the local Humane Society 12 years ago, and Timber sure looks like a purebred husky, a gorgeous blue eyes, but he is way too busy with his daily walks, regular tummy rubs, and sofa naps to take your Ancestry.com DNA test, so you're just going to have to deal. Take his word for it. Yeah, take his word for it. He's gorgeous, blue-eyed, husky, mm -hmm. gorgeous Timber. We love you, and go look for Timber on our Facebook page or website. And his, his person is wearing a delightful outfit, by the way. Yeah. Now, that's not in the picture, but this is on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, his person wore a DGBG T-shirt. That's how we got. He, she, she got our attention. <laughs> Merch, baby. Merch is the future. Merch is the future. <laughs> you can send your internet kitty or dog or rabbit to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service Go Postal Unions letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. And don't forget our Amazon link at our website. We believe in buying local. 
And we also believe in shopping Amazon with our link if our, your alternative is a big box store. Now, be aware, uh, you know, all this Facebook stuff that has come out, we cannot tell your name or address or no. any personal information nope. about who is shopping at Amazon. Uh, no. All we can see is a snapshot of what's being purchased at our mm -hmm. link. That's it. And uh, I went and checked that out this week, and it is great to see that nearly um, all of the thing items that are being purchased with our link are big box store stuff. Uh, a lot of people are buying pet supplies, pet vitamins. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody bought um, turtle food. <laughs> turtle yeah. Food. That's Mrs. Um, Mitch McConnell. Human Shh. human vitamins. Lots of people buying their vitamins. Uh, you know, all at once and when they we refill their vitamins that way. Um, all these kind of purchases that, that you would otherwise not be able to get from a local outlet. You get them at a big box store anyway. And uh, that's some smart shopping. We've got smart listeners and we appreciate we you guys uh, shopping at Amazon when it makes sense to do so using our link. We deeply appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution and you can too. See our website, professionalleft.blogspot.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. Thank you. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, on behalf of all of us, the Internet Kitties wish everyone in the path of a hurricane this week safety and security, and know that our prayers are with you. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2017, Drift Class, Blue Gal Podcast. Fake news, sparkle farters.